So instead of looking at the options, uh, let's try and name this organic compound ourselves, right? And then we'll just compare our solution uh, to the options we have. So how many carbons do we have? We have one, two, clearly. So we know fully well that the name is supposed to start with ETH, right? Uh, and then now we can then look at the functional group so that we can know how our name is supposed to end with. So we have a carbon. Uh, that is bonded to an oxygen and another hydrogen, right? Uh, if this carbon was bonded to an oxygen and two other carbons, uh, then it was going to be uh, a ketone, right? Uh, for a ketone, uh, we need something of this manner, right? Uh, this would be a ketone. So it's clearly not a ketone. And then instead of O, if we had OH, then it will be an alcohol, right? Uh, but then we don't have that. So it's clearly not an alcohol. And then if this carbon was bonded to an oxygen and an OH, then it was going to be an ester, right? And then it's clearly not an ester. This carbon is only bonded to an oxygen, another carbon, and a hydrogen. That's an aldehyde. So our name will end with ENAL. So we have ethanol. And that is option d and then 1.2 says uh, which of the following represents a balanced equation for the combustion of octane again instead of looking at the options let's have an equation for the combustion of octane and then we'll just compare our solution with the options uh, so we have uh, c8 h18 plus o2 uh, giving us co2 plus h2o uh, when you have combustion the products will always be co2 and h2o right uh, so the problem here is to balance the equation right so let's go ahead and try do that uh, so clearly on the left side we have 18 uh, carbon atoms right and then on the right hand side we only have one so how do we balance that we put a coefficient of eight and there we go uh, now we can move to hydrogen you always have to start with carbon uh, hydrogen and then oxygen if you do it in that way it's way easier compared to if you just start with oxygen uh, i suppose uh, let's go ahead so for hydrogen we have 18 atoms and then on the right hand side we have only two how do we balance that 18 divided by two it's nine so we put a coefficient of nine here uh, now let's move to oxygen uh, we have two atoms of oxygen on the left hand side and then on the right hand side we have eight multiplied by two uh, that will be 16 right plus nine oxygens right so we have 16 plus nine uh, which is 25 right and then here we have two oxygens so how can we balance this oxygen on one side we have 25 on the other side we have two uh, if we put 25 uh, divided by two here as a coefficient uh, then the oxygens will be balanced right uh, but then you know fully well that on a chemical reaction we're not supposed to have fractions so if we multiply everything out by two uh, then we're going to have our balanced equation so if we do that we're going to get two uh, c8 h18 uh, plus 25 o2 uh, giving us uh, 8 multiplied by 2 that is 16 right 16 co2 plus 9 multiplied by 2 that is 18 so we have 18 h so now we have the equation of uh, our combustion reaction and we can look for the corresponding option right so option number a we have 2c8 h18 plus uh, 25 and then we have 16 we have 18 so it seems like option a is the right one right so 1.2 uh, we go in with option a uh, now let's do 1.3 1.3 saying which of the following compounds will decolorize uh, bromine water uh, the fastest under normal conditions so bromine water is just a solution of bromine right uh, so the way you approach this question is uh, what would easily react with uh, br2 right uh, a says ethane we know that ethane is 
unsaturated so it can easily react right so at this point uh ethane uh you know we can work with it and then b says uh, ethanol uh, that cannot easily react because it's saturated uh, same with ethanol and ethane right so for 1.3 uh, a compound that will decolorize uh, bromine water the fastest under normal conditions uh, would be ethane uh, that is because it is unsaturated and it will readily react compared to the other compounds right now let's do 1.4 1.4 is saying uh, three catalysts are used separately to increase the rate of a reaction uh, of a hypothetical reaction. Uh, in the diagram below, uh, E1, E2, and E3 represent the effect of each catalyst on the activation energy. Uh, the activation energy being E0, right? I just circled it. And then which of the following is the activation energy uh, for the reaction with the highest rate so a reaction with the highest rate so a reaction with the highest rate allows more number of molecules to have required energy right to be above the activation energy so we say that the activation energy is here at e naught or eo right before the addition of catalyst e3 only this number of particles had enough energy to react right uh, but then after we add e3 uh, more number of particles have enough energy to react but then when we use catalyst e2 even more particles have enough ek to react right but you can see that when you use e1 even more particles can react right so the highest rate uh, we associating it uh, with the activation energy E1. It lowers the activation energy uh, way more than E2 and E3 because you can see that on the x axis uh, we have EK, right? At E1, uh, we are here, and then E2 requires just a bit more energy, and then E3 requires even more energy. But then E1, it really lowers the energy more than all the others, right? Uh, let's do 1.5 uh, so 1.5 is saying uh, 50 centimeter cube of 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube solution of hydrochloric acid is poured to 5 grams of zinc uh, which is inside a glass beaker at room temperature uh, which of the following factors will not increase the initial rate of the reaction uh, i've done a video on uh, rate of reactions and factors that affect that uh, so if you want to watch that uh, you can go uh, on a playlist titled rate of reactions and watch that video uh, but then let's answer our question here so the keyword which is in bold right uh, which factor will not increase the initial rate of the reaction if you grind the zinc into powder that will obviously increase the rate of the reaction because you're increasing the surface area and then uh, using 30 centimeter cube of 0.2 mole per decimeter cube of hydrochloric acid so let's see how that affects the rate of the reaction initially for hydrochloric acid we had 50 centimeter cube and 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube concentration so let's find the number of moles there so the number of moles uh, is equal to the concentration multiplied by the volume uh, so that will be uh, 50 divided by a thousand multiplied by 0 0.1 uh, and that is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, moles, right? Uh, let's see how that compares with uh, 30 centimeter cube multiplied by uh, 0 0.2. Uh, that is uh, the number of moles will now be 6 times 10 to the minus 3. So clearly, if you choose to use that volume and concentration, you will increase the number of moles, right? And increasing the number of moles uh, increases the rate of the reaction. So B is not what you're looking for. And then C says increase the temperature of the acid solution to 50 uh, degrees Celsius. If you increase the temperature, you increase the rate of the reaction. So C is not our option. Now we know that the option we're going for is D, right? Uh, but then let's just look at the question.
equation and see why it is true so it is saying uh, using 100 centimeter cube of 0 0.1 uh, solution of hydrochloric acid so let's see how that affects uh, the concentration so we have a hundred divided by a thousand right let's see how that affects the number of moles so we're gonna have the number of moles being equals to a hundred uh, divided by uh, a thousand multiplied by 0 0.1 right uh, concentration multiplied by uh, the volume and then if we do that what am I getting we get in uh, one times 10 to the minus 2 uh, moles right so initially we had 5 times 10 to the minus 3 now we have 1 times 10 to the minus 2 right so uh, to the minus 2 is definitely greater to the minus 3 right so for option d we are increasing the number of moles and the rate of reaction will go up and then here we're looking for an option uh, that doesn't increase the rate of the reaction 1.6 says uh, the graph below represents uh, the change in the rate of a reaction versus time for the reversible reaction that takes place uh, when an amount of hydrogen gas and iodine gas was sold off in a container and then there we have um, an equation right and now it says that what change in the conditions uh, was made at 10 minutes to change the rate of the reaction as indicated on the graph so let's go to the graph and look at 10 minutes so if all the time if these lines for the rate of the reactions of the forward and the reverse reaction right they go up simultaneously and there is no sudden drop in one of the lines then the change was a catalyst it's only a catalyst that will have uh, that sort of an effect right because if you increase the temperature depending on whether the forward reaction is endothermic or exothermic then one reaction is supposed to be favored than the other and and even if you play around with all the factors uh, you're supposed to have a sudden increase followed by a sudden drop right but then only when you add a catalyst they will all increase and there's no sudden drop so now we're looking for a catalyst and that is option a uh, now we can go to 1.7 1.7 is saying uh, consider the four different solutions which of these solutions is a dilute weak acid solution so dilute uh, weak acid solution let's look at the options we have a says uh, 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube of hcl solution we're looking for dilute and weak right we know fully well that hcl is not a weak acid you might choose to dilute it with water but then it's not a weak acid uh, by nature so hcl cannot be part of our solution and then b says five mole uh, per decimeter cube of ch3coh right we know that ch3coh is a weak acid in its nature right so now uh, it satisfies the weak criteria but then is it dilute we have five moles per decimeter cube that is very very concentrated right so it cannot be dilute so option b cannot be our answer uh, now let's look at option c option c we have oxalic acid oxalic acid it satisfies uh, the criteria of weak right uh, we know that is a weak acid and then uh, let's look at uh, whether it's dilute or not uh, 0 0.5 mole per decimeter cube it's you know it's sort of dilute right it's not very concentrated compared to b here we can say that uh, we're considering the oxalic acid and let's look at option d option d we have naoh which is a base right so obviously here our answer is c because it's dilute and it's weak maybe if there was another weak and more dilute acid then we would go with it but then clearly it is the only one that is dilute and weak let's see what 1.8 has for us right so it is saying that uh, the following equations represent two hypothetical half reactions the reduction potentials are also provided um here we have uh, x2 plus 2 electrons giving us 2x minus right and then we have the reduction potential and then on the reaction below we have y plus plus one electron 
obviously giving us y and then we have the reduction potential and then the question says which of the following substances uh, from these hypothetical half reactions will be the strongest oxidizing agent so now as you can see the only information we have is the reducing potentials right uh, which one will be the strongest oxidizing agent so now the question is what is the relationship between the reduction potential and the state of uh, being an oxidizing agent right so we know fully well that uh, the higher reduction uh potential right the higher the reduction potential uh the stronger an oxidizing agent is right uh the stronger um an oxidizing agent is right uh so here uh, let's look at uh which one has the highest uh, reducing potential right and from there we will know which one is the strongest oxidizing agent right uh, so let's you know look at our equations again uh, so clearly here on equation one x2 plus two electrons giving us two x minus as a reducing potential of 1.9 volts right uh, compared to the second equation uh, which has a reducing potential of minus 2.8 so on our first equation are we then picking x2 or x minus uh, we know that an oxidizing agent gains electrons right so clearly x2 is the one gaining electrons uh, to form 2x minus uh, and not the other way around right so here we go in with uh, option b because that's where we have x2 1.9 is saying which one of the following combinations correctly shows the products formed during the electrolysis of brine right if you don't know what brine is then how can you possibly answer this question that's what you're here for so brine is nacl solution right it's an nacl solution so the equation of this reaction is a 2nacl plus 2h2o uh, giving us cl2 plus h2 plus naoh right so what is going to happen is that at the unknown we are going to have 2cl minus uh, giving us cl2 plus two electrons and then on the cathode we're going to have 2h plus plus two electrons uh, giving us h2 right uh, this is uh, what's happening in the grand scheme of things right just to make a summary of the reaction so clearly uh, now we're looking for an option that says at the anode we get chlorine and then on the cathode we get hydrogen right so yeah option a says that on the anode we get in chlorine and then on the cathode we get in hydrogen right so the answer here is option a based on these brine equations that we have uh, this is the overall reaction uh, this is what takes place at the anode and then this is what takes place at the cathode now let's do 1.10 uh, 1.10 says i studied the diagram below illustrating the industrial production of product c what is product c stories and then which process is used to produce product c okay so let's look at yeah the first step before you know we get ahead of ourselves so we have nh3 plus o2 and then yeah some way somehow we're going to have h2o plus something here right uh this is actually oswald process right uh what we have here is no right so what we have here is no and then the equation is unbalanced you have to do that work and then from having no then you get no plus o2 and then we're going to get no2 so here at b we have no2 right and then at c we have NO2 
plus H2O and we're supposed to get HNO3. Uh, like I've said, it's Ostwald process, right? Uh, that is option number D.